So I haven't uploaded in a while, so I figured I'd just recommend a few movies I watched lately. They both came out over the past few years. They both follow typical genre tropes, but do it very effectively. They both star young adult casts. They're both available on Netflix, and they're both really good. So let's just jump right into it, starting with Sing Street. Sing Street proves to me that a movie can be filled to the brim with cliches and still be effective. I mean, there's a reason why cliches exist after all. It's because at one point they actually worked. And Sing Street is borrowing from movies you've seen before, there's no doubt about it. But this movie doesn't use cliches as a shortcut, it uses them because that's just what works best for the movie. Sing Street's a movie about a kid who transfers into a really shitty new school, and he wants to get a girl, so he starts a band. And if I told you only that, you'd probably assume it's just a shitty Disney Channel movie or something. But this movie isn't that. Yes, it does some of the things you would expect a coming-of-age comedy would, but these characters are so genuine that it feels like the camera is just following them and they're doing what comes naturally. While a few characters do simply serve as placeholders, it almost doesn't matter because the movie shifts that focus towards main characters. All of the major characters have arcs and none of them stay the same throughout the film. Even the quote unquote placeholder characters still have some personality to them compared to a lot of other movies I've seen. The acting is great across the board, the cinematography is consistent, and the music's actually really cool. I love how the music that the band makes evolves throughout the film based on how the characters are feeling. That makes sense within the film itself, and it simultaneously punctuates emotional moments for the viewers. Despite my praise, I have some issues with this film. Oftentimes, the music doesn't match what the characters are playing. There's also one scene towards the end of the film where the CGI is horrendous. Also, I feel like a solid half hour at least could have been added to this movie for more character development. This would have made the pacing a tad slower, but I do think it would pay off overall because it would make the film more suspenseful in moments of conflict and a bit more emotional when drastic things happen. My biggest issue with this film, however, is that there are some subplots that are either dropped completely like halfway through the movie or just solved in a half-assed manner. These subplots weren't unnecessary, but they should have been concluded rather than just conveniently solved randomly. Still though, this movie had very memorable characters and some genuine emotion and is well worth your time. Definitely do check it out. The second and final film I'm recommending in this video is the horror film It Follows. A lot of you have probably seen it or at least heard of it, but in case you haven't, I'm not going to tell you much of anything about the concept for this movie. Don't even watch the trailer for this movie, just go on Netflix and watch it, especially if you like horror movies, because if you're a horror movie fan, this is a must-see. The execution of the film's concept does such a good job making you feel paranoid for the characters throughout the entire film, and even after the movie ends, you still feel kind of paranoid. The soundtrack by Disasterpiece aids in the film's suspense so well. It's very synth-heavy and sounds quite a bit like an old 80s horror film soundtrack, but it isn't like that solely to pay homage. The soundtrack just works so well with the movie on its own, and the fact that it sounds like a classic horror movie score is just a bonus, really. The way this movie is framed is also incredibly effective. I love how the camera pans so often throughout the movie because you don't know what exactly it's going to pan towards. It even pans towards nothing on occasion just to fuck with you. Also, the film does a great job being vague, which will help aid in giving you the lasting paranoia after the movie ends. You don't know exactly where the film takes place, the quote-unquote rules the movie makes are fairly broad, and it's even vague as to when exactly this movie takes place. The ending is brilliant too because it's fairly ambiguous and makes that feeling of paranoia last when the film is over. On an aesthetic level, this movie looks and sounds beautiful. It looks and sounds like an old 70s or 80s horror film except not as cheesy looking. The characters are typical horror movie tropes, but they're fleshed out enough that I actually didn't want them to die. They all seem like pretty cool people, even the douchebags weren't so bad that they were worthy of death. Also, without spoiling the concept, I love how this movie tests the morality of the characters and puts them in situations where they have to do pretty scummy things if they want to live. Overall, this movie does a lot of things really, really well, although there were definitely some pretty big logistical errors and moments where the cops should have been involved and weren't. Also, despite the concept being moderately vague, there were a few moments where the film did seem to have broken its own rules. But the flaws I have with this movie don't really bother me that much because there are so many great things that the film does. It follows as one of the very few horror films that scared me both while I was watching it and after it was over. So because of that, I can't recommend it enough, especially if you like horror movies. Anyways, those are two movies that I watched recently, and I recommend both of them. If you've seen either of them, tell me what you think of them in the comments below. That's all for now, I'll see you next time.